Okay, so it looks like we're recording and I think we're ready to get started. First, let me tell you a little bit about Albers Communications Group. We are a full service PR and digital marketing and communications agency headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. We strongly believe that PR and digital marketing go hand in hand and work best when used as a part of an integrated communication strategy. We represent clients in all 50 states and Canada where our public relations and social media specialists help our clients achieve positive exposure nationally and locally in their operating markets. We are proud to help some of the Omaha's leading organizations reach their goals. We also have special ex specialized expertise in helping companies become leaders in their markets and their industri industries. As I mentioned earlier, I am Allison Palladino, Public Relations Specialist at Albers Communications Group. In my positions, I help our clients increase their brand awareness through a variety of strategies including media relations, cause marketing, and digital marketing. Feel free to email me if you'd like to speak in more detail about your company's communications goals. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Allison Palladino. I'm noticing that some people may be having trouble hearing the presentation today. If you are having any technical difficulties, please chat in the lower left hand side of your screen and we will try to help you get connected. In early 2013, the Albers Communications Group sat around a conference table to discuss how we could impact our community in positive ways through our knowledge and expertise in the public relations and digital marketing industry. Ultimately, we landed on one big idea that we thought could help both young professional job seekers and their employers. We liked the concept of contributing to the next generation of leaders and our business community at the same time. And that is where your job and your online image, It's Complicated, was born. When we started formulating ideas for this project, we put ourselves in the average social media user's shoes and thought about what issues they may face as they search for a job or vie for a promotion. Then we thought about challenges employers face in terms of checking social media profiles as part of the background screening process. We've developed so many questions from both the employer and the employee perspectives that we knew it was time to do some research. With our research, we hope to uncover exactly how area employers are viewing their employees' social media profiles and what they truly think about them. We knew that we could help young professionals in the market understand the impact of their social media use on their careers and how they can craft their profiles in a positive way to show employers precisely the type of candidate they are looking for. Here is a look at what we will be covering today. First, I will share the research we recently conducted in the Omaha area that reveals what employers think about their employees' social media habits. Next, I will show you some ways you can become an advocate for your company online. And after that, I'll share how you can use your social media profiles to support your resume and work towards your next level position. At the conclusion of the webinar, I'll take a few moments to answer any questions that may have been chatted in. As I mentioned earlier, Albers Communications completed research by conducting 200 telephone interviews with human resource professionals at companies located in the Metro Omaha, primarily Douglas, Sarpy, and Pottawatomie counties. We asked a variety of questions regarding the employer's views on their employees' social media habits. To find out the impact social media has on an individual's career, we asked how many employers check social media profiles as part of the hiring process and which platforms they cho chose to most often check. We also asked questions to find out how they interpreted professionalism based on the employee's online image. To get their views on how the social media use of an individual can affect a company, we asked these employers how concerned they were about their employees' use of social media and its potential negative impact on their company's brand or reputation. We also had them identify what types of content could either be damaging or inconsequential. If we asked employees, we asked them if employees could be significant advocates for their brand. 
Outside of the hiring process, we wanted to find out exactly what type of focus employers are putting on social media. How many have social media policies developed for their employees? How many businesses provide training programs to show employees what is acceptable? First, let's take a look at how this group of employers has responded regarding the usage of social media and its impact on careers. 89% of employers look at social media as part of the hiring process are looking at Facebook. This comes as no surprise since Facebook is still the most popular social network online. It's important to keep all your social profiles in check, however. This group of employers also reviewed other social networks and and 30% included Twitter in their response. Another 30% mentioned LinkedIn as part of their hiring process checklist. 75% of employers say that professionalism displayed on prospective employees' social media pages is important in evaluating, in evaluating them as job candidates. You can wear a suit to the interview and present the best hard copy resume in the pack, but your prospective employer is getting a 360 degree view of your professionalism by checking your online presence out during the interview process. Also, 65% of employers view social media as an important soft skill for employees that can enhance their job performance and career prospects. Right next to your ability to manage time efficiently, solve problems effectively, and act as a team player goes your ability to be active and appropriate in your social media profiles. Later on in this webinar, I'll show you some easy ways to start working on this skill. Our research helped us answer an important question. Does your social media presence impact your career? Absolutely. Not only is it the most popular social network being reviewed during the hiring process, it's also an indicator of your professionalism and con is considered by more than half to be a modern soft skill. We also asked survey participants questions about their employees' use of social media and its impact on their company's brand or reputation. Here's how they responded. 87% of employers agree that the content that their, that their employees post on their personal social media pages, such as Facebook, can reflect either negatively or positively on the company. 59% of these employers say that political opinions or comments posted by employees to their personal social media pages could be damaging to the company's brand or reputation. And 51% of employers are concerned about their employees not always considering how their actions on social media may impact the company. You probably haven't heard much guidance from your employer about the statuses you post on social media, and for the most part they are probably neutral as to what you post. That is, until the content you post reflects poorly on their brand. Even if you don't list your employer as part of your profile, it's relatively easy to figure out where any social media user works. Putting a few pieces together from our large digital footprints online can give us an indication as to where you work or what industry you are a part of. This research tells us that our employers are concerned about content posted in our social profiles, and we should be too. Here are some telling trends we spotted in the survey results. We found out that 78% of employers view their employees as valuable online advocates for the brand, but only 36% of employers have social media use policy that they circulate to employees. And just 16% of employers include social media training for their employees. This is perhaps the most interesting set of data points we've compared. We've already established that employers are not only using your online image as part of the hiring process, but also holding their employees' social media usage as valuable extensions of their brands. So why isn't there more education and policy being put in place? Here are a couple possible reasons. Employers aren't sure where to start. As part of the communication strategy, regulating employees' social media usage can be a touchy subject and also in involves the employee's legal rights in some situations. The social media landscape is constantly changing and is difficult for employers to react if they, don't, if they do create a social media policy. It needs constant review to stay re relevant. 
it's difficult to keep the policy positive. Employers can very simply establish a don't list for employees, social media usage, but offering encouragement is a challenge. We're about to look at the don't list, and more importantly the do's, to keep your, your profile polished and professional. As we just learned, the majority of employers we surveyed view their employees as valuable advocates for their brand. Part of becoming an advocate is representing yourself and your company in a positive way. Here are a few guidelines to consider. Think before you update. Since more than half of employers we surveyed said that they are concerned about their employees not always considering how their actions on social media may impact the company, it's important to consider what you post. With the exception of LinkedIn, not everything you share should be business related. After all, it is your personal profile, and updates you provide to the networks are exactly that, personal. Posts should, however, always be appropriate. Here's a quick checklist. To your knowledge, does your post contain grammatical errors or incorrect spelling? It is easy to make an error or two while posting from your mobile device, but poor grammar can be reputation damaging when it comes in the form of run-on sentences, missing punctuation, or garbled thoughts. Take a look at what's in your photos. Did you experience a wardrobe malfunction? Did the party get the best of you? Is your pose not quite representative of the way you typically act? Make it a rule not to post photos until the day after an evening out with friends, and make sure to set timeline review in your profile so you can keep on your friends' photos that may creep into your page without you knowing it. Is it too controversial? Is your political statement meant to ignite a dramatic comment from one of your Facebook friends on the other side of the issue? Always be thoughtful and considerate of your social relationships when choosing to discuss topics concerning politics, religion, and social issues. At the very least, target your message to like-minded individuals through your Facebook's list function. Click cautiously. Anything you like, comment, or interact with has the potential to turn up in someone else's newsfeed. When we are completing the research for this project, we really wanted to know what type of content is most important for social media users to stay away from. What keeps employers up at night? During the survey, we asked a group of Omaha employers how damaging they felt the specific types of content to be if posted by their employees. We asked about content such as provocative or inappropriate photos, drug and alcohol use, political opinions, crude humor, and even critical or discriminatory comments. It's important to note that all of these categories totaled significant numbers of responses. But the highest offenders were comments critical of the competition, photos that show drug use, and comments critical of the company or its employees. Part of becoming an advocate is not only understanding what's appropriate, but how the use of social media represents your company in the best possible way. We asked Omaha area employers what specific skills are desired for their employees regarding social media usage. More than half responded saying that they find it important for their employees to not only use multiple social media platforms, but also to know how to use them effectively. Now let's take a look at what you can do to socially interact with your company and become an advocate for your company's brand in the most effective way. Interact with your company. If you haven't already, like your company on Facebook, follow them on Twitter, Instagram, and other social platforms, and of course connect on LinkedIn. Interact with your company's posts. This will not only let others know you have an interest in the business, but will help your company's profiles gain better engagement with your personal network. And repost, retweet company news. Always let your company tell their news first via the company website or official social profiles. By advocating knowledge and understanding of your workplace, industry, and career, you can brand yourself as a professional expert in these topics. This may open you up to advancement within your current workplace or new career opportunities as well as the possibility for invitations to industry-related groups and professional designations. Here are a few ways you can polish up your profiles 
to support your career. Take photos when you attend professional events. Set Google News Alerts using keywords for industry-related news, and share what you find to be inter interesting, thought-provoking, and buzzworthy. Share free opportunities for those in your network to take part in what your company brings to your industry. If your company is hiring, let your social networks know by sharing the job posting in your social media profiles. Volunteer. If you donate time to a local charitable organization, your local chamber of commerce, or even a community organization, be sure to, make, to post appropriately about it with your social media platforms. Be sensitive to when photos are acceptable, and to what degree you can share your good deeds without appearing self-serving. Here, here are some updates to stay away from when working towards building your professional brand through your social media profiles. Don't sell. Educating others on your industry in a subtle way is the key. Pushing products or service repeatedly with a price attached is the quickest way to find yourself on the unfriend list. Resist over updating. Constant status updates and tweets about work may become mundane to those who are only interested in your message socially. Be friendly to your competitor. Although you may believe that your work and your company is the best, the old adage always applies. Treat others as you wish to be treated. So never post updates attack attacking a competing business. Refer to your clients only when they have something to celebrate, and let them post it first. We all have tough days, but when your TGIF status update includes a client meeting that went poorly, it's best to omit that detail. Now that we've gone over the do's and don'ts, here are a few examples to show how, how you can use your social media profiles to build your personal brand as a professional in your industry. In this Facebook status screenshot on the left, my coworkers Danny Hatfield and Ann Hadfield are shown giving blood during National Blood Donor Month in January. Danny's status regarding her volunteer work is quick and clever, and also spreads the word about blood drives through the use of the hashtag DonateBlood. This update shows that Danny gives back to her community and is able to spread the word about it in an appropriate way. For those who make the connection that Danny and Ann work together, it also gives the positive impression that their employer values volunteerism and community involvement. In the LinkedIn screenshot on the right, I've shared the registration for my webinar and encouraged my connections to take part in the free offering my company is hosting. Sharing this type of content from my employer's LinkedIn profile is quick and easy to do and lets other professionals, even those outside my industry, know about a free offering from my employer that might be a continuing education opportunity applicable to them. In my tweet near the bottom of the screen, I've shared a professional topic that many of my followers may be interested in, tips for workday productivity. I shared the topic via Twitter purposefully because I know that my peers might want to know some of the tips I'm trying to utilize while moving through my to-do list more effectively, and also enjoy a quick read on workplace productivity that they can share with their networks. In the Instagram screenshot on the left, my coworkers Ann Hadfield and Melissa Homan are shown at the Young Professionals Summit event earlier this year. As a high-profile event for Omaha Young Professionals, sharing this photo via social media is intended and encouraged by the YP Summit. Ann and Melissa are spotlighting their professional development and including themselves in the who's who of young professionals by using the appropriate hashtag for this event. In the Facebook status on the right, my coworker Judy Daniel has shared an article relevant to both her industry and also to friends and followers in her social networks. This share shows that Judy is on top of what's going on in her industry and lets her non-industry friends know that she is an expert in the field and is in the loop on the latest news. As a job seeker, you may have been instructed to utilize your resume to paint a picture of the type of employee the employer is looking for. While that advice is still an important part of your career growth, we have observed from our research that it is also important to continually brush up on your online image as part of the package. Just as you are being judged as a prospective employee by the content in your resume, you are also being reviewed by your active social media presence. 
the employers who participated in our research said that they are watching to gauge your professionalism. How you talk about previous employers, whether you have had positive or negative reputation based on your content that you post, and the maturity level of your content as well. Through the research I've shared with you today, you now know that many employers are in fact checking out your social media profiles during the hiring process, and also that they count you as a valuable advocate for their brand. I hope these tips and examples I've shared with you today will help you make the most of realities as you climb your way to the top. Think of your social media profiles as an opportunity to give your network, which may include your employer and potential employers, a glimpse into both your personal and professional life and how well you represent them. Rather than the reality TV show, make sure to provide just the highlight reel. Continue to develop the soft skill of using social media as well, uh, well across all the different platforms. As I shared in the research portion of this presentation today, you will be valued by your employer and may even be able to provide insight into your company's need for a social media policy or even a training pr program for other employees. Before we get into questions, I'd like to invite you to our next webinar, Wednesday, July 23rd at 10 a.m. Central. Tom Albers will be presenting Research, the Beginning, and the End. Strong research is the foundation of any successful public relations plan. It helps you pinpoint your target audience, clarify objectives, develop key message points, and measure your progress. Valid research also lets the news media and your company know that your story is relevant. Al Albers Communications Group President Tom Albers will draw on 22 years of experience as a PR research czar to share his insights. And one more housekeeping item. I'd like to invite each of you to take a few moments to fill out the questionnaire that will appear at, the, at your screen at the end of the presentation. Please provide your comments about today's webinar, or if you have any topic suggestions that you'd like to have us address in future webinars. And now I'll take a few moments to answer any questions that have been chatted in. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to chat your question into the box on the lower left-hand side of your screen. All right, Allison, we have a couple questions so far. Um, the first is, I have privacy settings set up on my Facebook profile so people who are not my friends on Facebook can't view content that I post. Is that enough? It's a really good question. Um, it's always a good idea to review your security settings on your Facebook pro profile or any of your social profiles and set them based on your pre preferences. I would, however, remind you that anything you post on the Internet could be received by the public. If someone wants to see what you have in your profile, there are a few ways that they can go about it. They can connect with a mutual friend that they can ask to review it for them. Um, your content can also be viewed by users outside your network. If one of your friends likes, shares, comments on a post of yours, and then it makes in, it into the other person's news feed. And the other way that they can see things is through a variety of different phrases that, and keywords that they can Google search. So for example, if I was to Google Jane Doe, the company's name is both in quotations, and the word Facebook. I might be able to pull comments or different things that you've done um, around the web or in different Facebook profiles or on public pages. Um, the same works for Twitter. If you would put in quotations the employee's name, Twitter, and the company name, um, you, can, you can pull a lot of information up that way as well. Great. We have another one here. Um, I'm the owner of a small business, and we're considering developing a social media policy for our team. We're not sure where to start. What advice do you have? Oh, great. Um, I would encourage you to start with your human resources department if you have one, or if you partner with an outside company who helps coordinate your human resources policies. I would start there. Consult their advice and um, try to develop something that fits the needs of your business and um, also you know, considers all the factors that they are going to go over with your employee benefits and um, your employees' needs. 
If anyone else has questions, go ahead and chat them in the box on the lower left side of the screen. Allison, I have one more here. Um, I tend to post on my social media profiles a lot. How much would you say is too much? Okay, um, oversharing you know, is certainly always a risk with social media. And I would say you're probably not alone. There's a lot of offenders on that subject. Um, you probably heard me just a little bit earlier say give the highlight reel versus the reality TV show, and that will give you a good balance. I would recommend if you want to you know, kind of create some parameters around it, I would recommend posting every few days because you also want to keep the allure of productivity as well. Okay, so it looks like we are good on questions. If anybody has any other questions that they would like me to go over, if, or if you know, something comes up later, you are certainly welcome to contact me again. Um, again, my name is Allison Palladino with Albers Communications Group, and I thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.